Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Today I have a quick video for you sharing a little circuit that I designed that greatly reduced my frustration, and it may greatly reduce your frustration as well if you own a power brick or a power bank. So for example, if you have a USB powered device and you plug the USB powered device into a power brick so that you can keep it charged, you'll find that when the device you've plugged into the power brick is charged, the power brick shuts off. So if you're not paying attention and say it's doing a function, it charges up your device and the device all of a sudden says, okay, I'm charged. The power brick shuts off. You come back a few hours later, say you're processing a video or you have a phone with a weak battery or something like that. You'll find that your battery is slowly draining off to nothing after you've plugged it into your power brick. And that gets very aggravating after a while. So I don't know why they didn't put override switches in these things for that particular function, but they didn't. So frustration drove me to build this circuit. So I designed a very simple little load pulser circuit that will help keep your power brick awake when you are using it for certain functions. And I'm going to share that with you in this video. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. For those of you that own these power packs or power bank or power brick, whatever you want to call these things, You'll know that whenever you plug a device into one of these things, they're useful to charge like a cell phone or, a, you know, whatever your tablet or whatever on the road, right? So you can see I have a, a pretty large one here and it's really heavy. At any rate, this is the one that my other half uses. And what ends up happening is, is her phone will charge up, right? And then what these things do is they shut off once the phone or device is charged up. So when it's on, you'll see, you know, blue lights on here. And then once the thing is charged, it just automatically does that without you touching it just shuts itself off well this is a real pain and i don't know why they didn't put an override in these things for this particular application i have a feeling i know the reason why and it probably has to do with either politics or some sort of rule i don't know uh, they, they want you to replace batteries in your devices and things like that so this thing can't act as an external battery or whatever so in my case I don't want to put up with that kind of garbage and I want the thing to stay on while my device is on so the battery in my device is 100% charged all the time and then if I need to go somewhere where I can't use this say outside my vehicle or you know I don't want to have this thing hanging off my device outside the house I can unplug it and my device is 100% charged so I can use it all over the place so any any of you that own these things you know what I'm talking about it's a real pain this one here does the same thing so this one here if I turn it on, you'll see that the you know, little lights glow here. It, it hasn't been charged in a while. I can use this thing forever and it just doesn't go down. <laughs> so at any rate, you'll see that they stay on and they stay on for about 35 seconds if it doesn't sense a load at the output. All right. And it's the same thing that your phone does or your tablet does once it's fully charged. The load level drops below a point to where this thing stays on and then it just will automatically shut off. And you'll see this thing here shut off in just a moment. So what I've done is I've designed a small little circuit. It's nothing special. It's super simple. You can build the thing uh, basically dead bug style. You can put it, there it is, it's off now, right? So you can build the thing dead bug style or you can build it into some perf board or whatever. It's, it's the simplest little circuit you've ever seen and it'll keep these things awake, all right? So it won't allow the thing to fall asleep. So for those of you that say have a, an aging device that where the battery goes flat really quick, so it charges fast, and then it shuts the power brick or bank or whatever you want to call the thing off. And then your battery on your phone or whatever starts to drain real fast again, right? Before you get to turn the thing back on again, your phone is almost dead. Well, this thing here will, you know, keep the charge right up. The little circuit that I've designed here. And I'm going to share that with you in this video. So to give you an example, I've added that little uh, device into this. I've actually built it right into the device for my other half so she can just plug it in and take it with her. I, I drilled a small little hole here with the uh, the small bit on my tip cleaner for my desoldering tool. So you, you have a little bit that you can clean your the tip of your desoldering tool. I just use that drill, put a little hole in there and in the case itself, right? Of course, with the whole unit taken apart, I'm not drilling anything with a battery pack inside, right? So the whole thing is taken apart. Just put a small hole there and then just put some hot glue on the other side and push it up through the hole and then and then basically just cut the top of it off and it acts as a light pipe. So uh, the little circuit board is underneath with a little LED and you'll see when I turn it on, the, the circuit is designed to, to give an initial pulse, right? See there, here it is. 
and it'll go off. Now, every 25 seconds, this thing here will come on for about 2.5 seconds. Okay, and what that does is that tricks the little IC in here to think, oh, they've reattached a load to it again before it times out. So it's about, there's about a 10 second window after that uh, before the thing will time out. So this tricks the little IC in here and says, oh, they've reattached a load again. I better stay on and it resets the little timer. You see, there it is again. So it's resetting it right now and it's reset and this won't go off. So now the, the power brick stays on. Now, I built, I was a little extreme with this thing. You know, I, I put the thing inside the case. You don't need to do that. You can put it in an external box or wherever. And this here is the little board that you can build. Now, again, you don't need to build it like this. This is a little circuit board that I put together here. And you know, this took, I made a bunch of them. All right. It took about oh, two hours to make a whole bunch of these things right here. And they're ready to go populated and everything. Right. So I'll just, I'll shut this off. You hit the button twice and then they, they, it shuts off, right? So this one here would be for this device right here, and uh, I'll just zoom on in and show you the board. Now again, don't get intimidated by the little board. If you wanna make these things, they're very easy to make, all right? The, the actual printed circuit board itself is very easy to build. If you don't wanna build it like this using these types, you know, this type of components, you can build it with through-hole components on just some perf board or whatever, and then put it in an external box, and it just goes across the line. So on the in the actual USB output here, it just goes across the positive and negative, so it's in parallel with the load that you have external to it. So if you were to cut a, a USB cable apart, most of them are like this, right? Well, this one here just has two wires and there's no data wires or anything. So it's just two wires in here, right? And then they're nicely color coded, red and black, right? Positive and negative. So in this case, you know, the positive goes to this pad and the negative just goes to this pad. And if you wanted to run that out to say uh, another device, so this here say plugs into another device, same thing again, you just parallel it again, right? So this goes from here to here, like so. And then the original USB jack goes from here to here as well. So it's just in line with everything. It's in parallel with whatever you're operating. And what happens is, is this little IC right here turns on a transistor and it puts this across the, the actual lines for about 2.5 seconds, a 51 ohm resistor. So what happens is when this thing is idling, okay, so when you first turn this thing on, okay, so right now it's on, when this thing is idling, the initial pulse is about 100 milliamps. So it's about 100 milliamps for 2.5 seconds, and then it shuts off. And then after that 2.5 seconds, it drops to 100 microamps. So this thing pulls very little current. And that's what you want. You don't want this a device across the line uh, drawing incredible amounts of current all the time because that just drains your battery faster, right? So it basically what this thing is, it just shows up for 2.5 seconds to say, hey, time to reset there, fella, and then and then it shuts right off for another 25 seconds and it just keeps doing that repetitively. Very simple timer circuit and uh, yeah, so very easy to build. So the schematic for this little thing right here is right here. Let's grab it off the side and I'll back this out just a little bit. And that's pretty bright. Let me just bump down the exposure here a little. Okay, so there it is. And it's, it's extremely simple. As you can see, this here consists of the timing circuit right here, right? So these resistors here will adjust the on and the off time. So if you want this thing to have a, a, a longer off time, you would just up this value right here, and it will make the off time s sit on. I think 25 seconds is uh, a, a comfortable value for most of these things. They prob Most of them use the, the same IC inside, and that little same IC seems to time out at about 35 seconds. I have the the actual IC number around here somewhere. At any rate, it's disappeared in all of my clutter. So this thing here will, uh, yeah, just pulse. So what happens is this thing here turns on and it turns on this transistor. And of course it just basically, this is acting as a switch. So it connects this 51 ohm resistor to ground. There's a little uh, yellow LED right here. It's a, in an SOT23 package and that turns on just to indicate that this transistor and the whole circuit is operating correctly. So this is across the load as well. So if this LED was to stay on, you would know that there's a problem with the circuit. So you can kind of use it for diagnosis as well.
So when it's first powered up, it should come on, and it's a little bit longer than 2.5 seconds for the initial for the initial turn on, and then after that, it's about a 2.5 second pulse every 25 seconds or so. And these are rough values, so it all depends on you know how good your tantalum capacitor is, you know how close to value it is, and uh, you know how close your resistors are and things like that. This is just a standard diode. You could use a one in uh, four one four eight or something like that in here, 4152, whatever you have kicking around, just a standard diode. This IC, you can't use a standard 555 for this unless you want a much, much higher off current, right? These things, they, this thing will sit in, you know, pull 100 microamps when this is not turning anything on. So a standard 555 timer would um, be drawing a lot more current. You want to use the ICM7555, the CMOS device. It uh, pulls very little current. Decoupling capacitor up here just to keep any noise. Usually these things have a switching supply inside, S some form of switcher to take the, the not very much, but it, it bumps up, you know, 3.7, 4.2 volts to about 5 to the to these jacks right here, right? So there's a, a little bit of switching action going on. This just keeps noise off the line so that it doesn't affect anything here. For those of you that are familiar with the uh, 555 timer, usually, you know, pin five has a bypass on it. The ICM 7555 does not need that bypass. So there's no pin five shown here. And uh, that's it. So you can build this in a little plastic box or whatever. And um, uh, yeah, you can just, whatever, run it external from the box. You don't even need to open the thing up and uh, put it inside there. Because my other half grabs this thing on the go and she's using this thing all the time, I don't want an external cord hanging off this thing with a box, so I just I put it right in. There's a lot of room inside this little little device here and uh, it's soldered right to the back side of the circuit board, right to uh, a, uh, a ground plane that has a bunch of you know stitching in it and things like that. So that's the reason in this device here that I've I've run edges on here. The ground is the edge, so I can solder it on either side right down to the circuit board inside here. And uh, that worked out very well. And then I just measured where the LED is. On this device here, the LED is right here. I'll just zoom on in again. I can uh, get that a little closer. That right there is the LED, and then it's pretty bright. And uh, what ends up happening is that shines right at the bottom of this little, little hole right here. So right there, shines right in the bottom of that. And the hot glue acts as a light pipe and brings that right to the top. So what I'll do is I'll solder some wires onto this thing and I'll just show you what this thing looks like when it's powered up and just plugged in and I'll show you how this will not shut off with this device. Here's a nice clean view of the schematic. So if you want to take a screenshot of this right now, feel free to do that. Please note that if you build this circuit and use this circuit, you are doing so at your own risk. After all, this thing is attached to a battery pack, right? All right, so I'll get that out of the way. And I'll just plug this thing in and I'll give you a quick example of what's going on here. So here we go. There we have it. So you can see the initial pulse is just a little bit longer. And then about every 25 seconds, we'll see that little yellow, kind of a yellowy orange color. It's a really nice color. LED there, turn on, indicating that this transistor and everything is working correctly. So again, this is just across the load. You can see the load here, and then this is just across the load, indicating that everything is working right. And of course, it's, you know, you, you can put a light pipe in uh, whatever you're doing if you want to put it in a little dark colored box or something like that. Again, a hot glue works wonderful as a light pipe, as you saw in that on that other battery pack. And uh, just carry the light to the surface, kind of like these. These are little light pipes right here too, right? Things like that. So anyways, the battery pack won't shut off now because this is in line. And uh, it, as long as this thing is pulsing, that 2512 part right there will stay not even warm, right? It just, uh, there's very little temperature variation at all versus that if something went wrong in here and this did stay on, that resistor would get pretty toasty. So that's a very important thing to keep the uh, actual, you know, the circuit working correctly. So that's what that little LED is there for. It's just to verify the circuit to make sure that everything is okay. That's a pretty bulletproof little circuit. You'd have to hook it up backwards or something like that to cause any kind of damage, right? So there it is. I'll just uh, shut this off. You can see that it will shut off with this attached. And then you can just leave the thing attached. And if you want to turn it back on again, just touch this and away it goes. So it's pretty, you know, again, it was designed to built right into the device. That's what I wanted, right? Because my other half, is she's on the run, she doesn't want any cables hanging with a box in the middle of it or something like that. Now, if you're interested here, I'll just uh, zoom out here for a moment. Pardon the shaky camera. So now, 
I will actually have copies of this and the printed circuit board layouts. I have a few of them in the actual copy. I'll have the uh, I'll have that copies of the printed circuit board layouts, and I'll also have a component layout map with uh, you know accurate part numbers if you wanted to get the exact LED and if you wanted to get the you know the the exact. I see and things like that, right? I have the actual part numbers up there. I've included some of the, you know, this this is the actual part number of this diode right here. Again, it's it's very unspecific, you know, like a 4142, whatever you have, you know, a 1N4007, it doesn't matter. Any diode with a with a 0 0.6 volt forward is absolutely fine, right? So uh, I, I've thought about using a shot key, but why, you know, it's just, this works just fine like this. So anyways, all those copies will be up on Patreon if you want to actually build this thing exactly the same way I did. And uh, yeah, all the files will be up there. I'll be adding those very soon. And uh, there are tons of projects up there as well. So there's not only this, I build and design custom pieces of test equipment to make your troubleshooting life all that much easier. All that stuff's up there and I share all my inventions and designs up there as well. So there's lots and lots of circuits up there. So uh, I'll put the link just below the show more tab. If you click the show more tab just below the video, you'll find it there. And I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section below. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. And again, this will be up there very shortly. I still have some papers to print off and some files and stuff to add to this. And uh, I will be adding a, a, another video on this, a very quick video, just explaining what's here again up there. All right, hope you enjoyed and hope this little thing benefits you, whether you build one yourself or whether you want to use the circuits. I wish you the best of luck and uh, maybe you'll have a whole lot less frustration because frustration drove me to build this. <laughs> Bye for now. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at all sorts of different electronic devices, solid state and vacuum tube alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that. If you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way, and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.